Hello all and welcome to Arc One Welding. My name's Calvin. I'm a coded MIG welder from the UK. I dabble in a bit of TIG welding, but I mostly stick to MIG. And I want you to join me on this journey as I show you a lot my day-to-day -day workings. And hopefully by the end of it, you can pick up a tip or two, but at the worst, it will be an entertaining video to watch. So today's pipe is not gonna show a lot of arc shots. This here is mostly a featured fabrication video so if you want to know about welding I don't want to be the guy to teach you because I'm sure there's many of you lot out there welding better than me but what I do want to show you is the techniques that I use to fabricate the reason why I say that is because my job role I do everything but chop my pipes so I grab the pipes I clean the pipes I prep the pipes I fabricate the pipes I weld the pipes I just yeah like I said I just don't chop the pipes or check or paint them that's other people's job I also don't have a helper I work solely on my own and maybe occasionally once every few months I may call someone in to help me on a, a crazy pipe usually when it gets a bit dangerous that's when I call for help but other than that I work alone so what that's done is made me um, tackle pipes a little bit different to other people and because I'm on price as well, I'm always rushing to get the pipe done so I can get paid for it. It's put me in a kind of unique situation where speed and efficiency is number one over anything else. So you're going to see a few techniques that you may not think is the best way to do it, but I'm sure it's one of the fastest ways. And also in this video, I want to talk about a little bit of um, price work and how I get paid. I'm not going to go too deep into figures but I'll break it down as to how I get paid and why that has forced me to become the type of welder that I am. But before that I want to quickly run through the equipment that I'm using, my MIG wire and my gas. So the gas that I'm using is 12% CO2, it's Argon Shield Universal and then I'm using a 1mm solid core wire so it's solid all the way through. It's also a copper free coating, so usually with these MIG wires you have an electroplated coating on it, usually copper, and it's used to lubricate the wire and protect the metal inside of it. When your wire is running through your liner, there's a lot of friction in it, so that's why the coating is good. It reduces the friction, allows the wire to run through it more smoothly, but one of the drawbacks of having a copper coated liner is the fumes when you breathe in burnt copper it's really not good for your for your health it gives you um, respiratory problems so i know in the uk um, there's regulations like employers must provide an air fed respirator and also an lev so something to get rid of the fumes this is just regulations that's changed over the years one thing you shouldn't play around with and that is your health we're already in a dangerous game that is set out to give us an early death. The last thing you want to be doing is playing around with it and not taking the correct precautions. That's why it stresses me out a little bit when I see a lot of um, American videos. You guys, if you're listening, start wearing some kind of respiratory protection. No one I see out there ever uses an air fed respirator. Most of the videos that I see are these pancake welding masks. And no matter what excuses you try to say or reasoning behind it, we all know you breathe in fumes if you don't have the respiratory mask. If you try to hold your breath or breathe shallow or do anything other than have an air fed mask or some kind of respiratory protection on your face, you're breathing in the fumes. And there's no excuses. All of us, we all take chances with our safety all the time, me included. So I don't want to try to be on some moral high ground telling you lot what to do. But I constantly try to be as safe as I can. So all I can do is share that with you guys. It's just safety always, man. Don't get hurt for your work. You're not going to remember them years to come, nor are they going to remember you. And you've got something, a lifelong condition. It's not worth it. There we go. That's my rant over. And if I sound weird, it's because I am recovering from an illness. My sinuses have been all swollen up for a few days. 
been a real, real tough one for me. But quickly, back to the video. Here's a little technique that I use to save my shrouds. So Fronius uses um, exclusively Fronius stuff. So these shrouds are 33 pounds for five of them. It's a lot of money. So to make them last longer, I um, center punch them and I open them back out and I clean them up and I put anti-spatter in it and I just try to give them a new lease of life. We know how fast and easy shrouds can get destroyed. So if I didn't do this, I'd be changing the shroud every day, especially because of um, where I'm resting my shrouds on my pieces. It gets so hot and it and it deforms its shape so fast and so easy. And I may be welding a, a 10 inch flange at two, nearly 300 amps continuously for like 10, 15 minutes. So the shrouds just get so hot, they deform and I'll be going through them like it's no one's business. Keep that nozzle nice and clean, take care of it, and at least that's one variable taken away from your troubleshooting if you're getting bad welds. So as I said earlier about how I get paid, now it's broken down into each type of weld and on what size pipe that you're working on. So you get paid a certain amount for a flange weld, for a shoe, for welding a socket, for welding a square branch, all of that has its own individual price and it changes per size pipe that you do so on this pipe here to calculate how much money i'll get for it you um, would count how many butt welds there are and then you'd also count how many flange welds there are and also the socket weld now all of that gets counted together and then the answer that you get is how much money i'll get paid for the pipe now my work doesn't want me to speak about the figures and stuff like that so I'm going to respect what they say and, and not talk about it. Also, that's my business use, I don't need to know that. Now being on price comes with some pros and cons. Now the cons are, you may do a hockey stick, so that will just be a two butts, two flanges and an elbow. You can do a nice small piece that you can handball and throw them around and just make some nice money on them or you've got crazy long pieces and both ends are really long and um, we don't get paid per meter so it's a bit of a tough one you you can spend you can make the same amount of money on two different pipes yet they can take way different amount of times to do some can take twice as long just because there's a positional involved and stuff like that that's one of the cons the pros are you're on a better rate you're on a, a better rate than day rate but then if there's no work there's no work and you're not making money so pros and cons and everything another pro of being on price work as long as you put the time in and you've got the skill if work isn't an issue you can make hundreds of pounds a day or you can make nothing depending on how you want to work but many jobs you're capped how much money you can make no matter how much um, effort you put into it you're not making any more money price work it's got the flexibility so the more effort you put in the more reward you get out of it now to address one of the cons and that is you can't always make money on all the pipes that you do I can do straights or I can do little store pieces that's any length up to six meters long because that's the longest we do up to six meters long with two flanges or 150 mil long with two flanges the time it takes me to do that and only getting paid for two flanges it's really not worth my time it's um flanges need to be subsidized with butt welds to make the pipe worth your time so for me i don't make that much money only doing straights bear in mind when i say i make no money it's relative to the industry that i'm in so no money to me is different to no money to you so just bear that in mind. But that's enough about money talks. Back to the video. And here you can see that I am rooting my socket. Oof, this weld was fun to do. So usually on small diameter pipes, I usually put a root run and a two, two run cap. And that's because the heat is so much more easier to control when I do smaller multiple runs. Usually if this was big pipe, I would have um, done a, like a 200 amp cap. Blends in nicely, nice and smooth. 
but what I find especially on small pipe because the radius of the pipe is so small you have to act fast and move fast and be in the perfect position otherwise 200 amps would either give you undercut blow through or the welds just droop down and then you get some kind of overhang of the weld what I don't like so times like this three little runs beautiful one big run there will be a chance that too much heat goes into it especially if you've ever had to weld any type of sockets onto two and a half inch pipe I've done so many two inch sockets onto two and a half inch pipe and when I tell you it is effort to get the welds to come out nice you have to rotate the pipe through so much different angles just so you're constantly welding in a position that doesn't make the weld droop down that's why smaller runs makes light work out of um, welds like that and look at this right now this is an example of what I'm talking about so I know the other end of my pipe is level and I am just holding the elbow in my hand with a spacer I ain't even using a shim right now just so I can put this piece on with little effort look at that no V stands no nothing I'm looking down the pipe to um, split the gaps both sides and I'm moving on it doesn't have to be any more complicated than this some sometimes I've seen people they, they overthink what needs to be done and um, when you've been doing it as long as me you, you know what chances you can take you know what steps you can skip and you know you kind of gamble what you can and can't get away with so that's one of them things that I've put on thousands of them and I know there would not be no issue me putting it on upside down like that splitting the difference between the pipe and the elbow to um, tack it on and all of these techniques just come back to price work and speed so I don't like to double handle I know that having the pipe set up in one position if you can do as much work to it as possible in that one position without um, moving it or changing it or going back and forth save so much more time that's why in this position here i put the socket on and the reason why i put the socket on at this point now i did not want the socket to dictate to me at any point what the level of the pipe should be that socket could have been put on a little bit out of whack it could have been it could have pulled and i didn't want to use that as a guide to tell me how to level the rest of the pipe off it's only a little socket that 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 doesn't dictate nothing now we're moving on to the what I call the most important part but is also the longest part and that is hanging the flanges so I've got a few techniques how I measure to um, know exactly how far to stick the flange at on certain pieces like you just saw I use a straight edge and I measure to the pipe and then I calculate how far the flange has to stick out to get the center to face measurement other times I may measure from the top of the pipe from the cup to the center of the weld and then I plus on whatever the fitting is and then that's another way of doing it but ultimately you want to get it as accurate as possible because where I'm because where I work there's a three mil tolerance now three mil doesn't seem much but it's annoying when you're having to chop flanges off and reposition them because they're four mil out longer or, or shorter so it's, it's always good to, to know that you're using the correct technique to get the right measurement to know how far to pull the flange out. It saves time. And a little trick. This depends on where you are. Say now how I'm measuring it. Say it doesn't quite fit. Say it's too long, too short. Hit the flange a little bit. Make it maybe not perfect, but within tolerance. And then you'll be surprised how much mill it can grow longer or shorter just by uh, making it off slightly not properly off but just uh, you know, ever so slightly but do that at your own risk it depends on where you work some people like when I um, when I done my apprenticeship and I was working with one of the guys on site and then we was doing some screwed fitting work some uh, I think two inch pipe and we were screwing on flanges I grabbed out my um, level my bolt holes and trying to get everything like lined up properly and he said to me what are you doing just use your eye and I'm like okay is that how you lot are then so where I'm from the factory we try to make everything bang on but where he was on site there's a it's a whole different um, set of rules on site he's using eye I'm using tape measures and um, levels to try to get things perfect so like I said depends on where you are if your if your pipes have to be bang on don't bother use it don't don't bother 
adjust the flanges to grow or shrink measurements but some places and I've heard it and seen it within the level is good enough as long as the bubble is in the two lines they are happy with that but I am done this video is coming to an end the pipe is done it was a nice piece to do lots of butt welds it was decent enough earnings on a pipe like this I make a, a decent amount of money in a day I could probably make three or four of these depends on, on if I do overtime recently I've been doing I think like seven until seven o'clock really just trying to grind hard to make some money ultimately that's what we're all trying to do right but yeah this this pipe is um, it came out good I'm glad I could share it with you a lot it's um, a fun piece to do I do so many different pipes that some they, they just they're not worth making a video out of it this is definitely one of them that is but with that being said if you want you don't know no. leave a like subscribe I've put a lot of effort into this I give this content out to you guys for free all I answer in return is just to hit the subscribe button that's all I want out of it I'm sitting here at 10 o'clock on my Saturday evening where I should be relaxing video editing so I can bring this content out for you lot which I enjoy don't get me wrong but at the same time you lot pay for Netflix for entertainment and all I ask for is a subscribe in return I think that's fair my videos for for you lot to like or subscribe but anyway I'm, I'm done all right thanks for watching and I will see you lot in the next one